now uh, sort of inspired a lot of uh, thinking here. The example of oracle strings comes from that, from some of the papers in that early work. TPTP is a library that's promoting the interchange of uh, uh, theorems and proofs between provers, but there's no real understanding of how to, to do that for proofs. They allow for it, but it's not something actively checked. So maybe this could be plugged into that framework quickly. There's a logical framework method based on the type of uh, lambda calculus. The deductive system it takes the LF and adds a functional computation. They have a, and the ambition to define lots of proof evidence as well. So probably the project closely, most closely related to this one. And there's the work on the PVS system and their integration of many little engines of proof. They have to trust proofs from other systems as well. And I conclude. Thank you. Thank you, Isa. Uh, can you hear me well? I, I can. Yes. It's a very sophisticated program, but I have a basic question for you. Uh, I have some doubts, some, some troubles understanding what I mean by proof evidence. Because, of course, you, you know, it's in classical epistemology. So you have a proof, and then they use it and have the evidence. So I cannot understand that what you mean by proof evidence is proof understanding or. Uh, one proof is, is, is more evident than any other proof if you trust this one more than the second, or if you understand the first more than the second, or if you can yeah, communicate yeah, yeah. one more than the second. But I'd like to add from you which of those. Uh, Actually, proofs. so we make the project much easier by saying all that we set aside. Now, when you come to me as a client, and I'm, a check, I'm the guy in charge of checking. Okay. You come to me and say, I just did this theorem prover, and I have this arc I built in the graph, and this light turns on, there's a proof. Okay. So then you and I have to have a conversation. Could be wrong, right? So I'm going to sit you down and say, can we get just to fit into the FPC framework? Okay. And so we have to really tease it all out. I mean, what do you really mean this is evidence that this is something that happens? Okay. So it, there's, it's, uh, it's an interview. I mean, can you convince me that you, what you call proof evidence is proof evidence? Now, I have a flex... It's a consultation. It's a consultation, yeah. And, and in the end, I mean, it's a little like saying I have a language. Can you write a parser for it? Well, I have to understand what the language is about. I mean, what structures do you see, right? So we have to play that whole game. And in the process, if you're really right that you, you, know, you really have a rock-solid um, notion of proof there, then we'll probably find a common ground and, work, and have something we can operate with. Otherwise... Uh, you could be wrong, and we have to go back and look for mo more things you could pull out of your search process. I see. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's recording, all right. Um, okay, my question is, I mean, from, from a long time ago with uh, proof assistance, uh, I was under the impression the idea is that once you have a formal proof, say in Isabel, for example, you can take that formal proof and write a proof checker for it. Is that precisely what you're doing here, or is this, is, is this a separate concern? Uh, right, so in Isabel, as in, in Koch, there's something like a proof checker, a kind of kernel that they often runs things by. Okay, certainly that's the case in Koch. In Isabel, it's a bit different. Okay, but there could still be, it's a huge system, it still could be lots of errors and um, in the implementation of the, the huge thing. Okay, so to what extent is their checker separate from their theorem prover? It's not very clear. But another thing is, how could someone who doesn't trust Isabel trust it? I mean, is, so what they don't do right now is output something that anyone else in the world could understand and implement against. Okay, it's, uh, that's, that's the goal we should be going for, I think. So it's not possible currently with a formal Isabel proof to un unwind it into something that can be checked in small steps? Uh, I think it's possible that they can output a, a formal proof and they probably have a definition of it. And I think right now, the only thing that read the whole formal proof is Isabel itself. 
okay? Uh, they, that could probably be fixed. Other people could implement it. Now, what you get is exactly one notion of proof, no matter how big, how complex, and based on what theory, right? It's, sort of, it's still maybe not tied to technology, but tied to something very specific about Isabel, though, right? So that is a step in the right direction, but it's probably we want to go further than that. I cannot stop. <clears throat> okay, so my question is uh, re related more to the topic than to the content of your talk, but still. So what do you think of the approach of justification logics from the perspective of your work, the approach of justification logics to generating proof certificates? Ah, no, it's a good, uh, it's a good topic for future work. I, I heard um, Artemov, uh, Artemov speak in uh, Helsinki about it. it. Sounds very appealing. Uh, it's not what we were going for, but I, I'm sure it's related. So the point is, what do you know about proofs after you've proved them? Okay, so this is sort of a prequel question. How do I even check it, right? But then once I have a lot of evidence of all these proofs and I know these things, what more can I conclude, right? So that's uh, absolutely very important. Uh, maybe it fits in the rather mundane notion of a library and uh, things that you do with proofs afterwards, but uh, let's say future work, certainly. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Thanks. I know we have a lot of interesting questions to uh, for today. We can start with for today, and then now we have to. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.